And welcome back to part eight in our super data science series on pattern recognition, where we are working with a k-means, visualizing the handwritten digit data set. In the last video where we left off, we ended up shaping, or excuse me, we ended up doing a few operations to work with our data. Uh, we established some labels, we uh, needed to establish some colors, and then we finally left off where we just started to actually plot and use um, matplotlib to establish our visualizations. So for this video, we're gonna be picking off right where we left off. And we can see from this, since I have some of it already added in front of you to the, to the code, we can see that we are using um, matplotlib again to use our image show. We want to set or pass in our Z. We're gonna use uh, interpolation as nearest we are using the extent as the minimum and maximum of both X and Y. We want to pair in the uh, plot. Our aspect is going to be set to auto and origin set to lower. What I want to focus on here is the following. We are plotting our centroids and we've briefly touched on our centroids before. Basically, and the main takeaway is what is a centroid of, of our data? Now a centroid is a data point within our data set at the center of the cluster. You're going to see where these are, are the center of the values of our handwritten digit data set. And when we plot, it's going to make more sense because they're going to be labeled with a white X. It's going to make it more easy to visualize them. And basically what we're doing is setting our centroids equal to the k-means cluster centers. We're plotting our centroids. We want to mark them with an X. We're also using a size and line width and we are using white as the color. So we have a white X on our centroids. And the last part of our plotting that we have to do, set our X limit. We wanna pass in X min and Y max. Or excuse me, we wanna pass in X min and X max. And for the, the next one, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna be doing that for the Y. The Y min and the Y max. We need to set uh, a ticks. We also going to use double parentheses so that's open. We want to set y ticks. Again, the same thing. And for the final, we have to pass in with the tell mat plot lib as plt. We have to show it. Now we are good to go. We're able to run it. So let's take a look at the handwritten handwritten digit data set using our principal component analysis and k-means cluster methodology. And here you go. You can zoom in if you want to take a look. And you can see we have plotted our centroids with the white X's. You see our color background on the um, different aspects of our data. And you have the colors which make it, it's very useful because it makes it easy to visualize. And you can see where the data sets, where the data points are actually plotted throughout the entire thing. And you have the um, centroids, the white X's label throughout. Now you can go back through and play with some values and see um, if you can generate some more accurate results or if you can group them in different means. That's one thing about K, um, the k-means clusters. You can always have different approaches to you know, how many clusters to break the data into and how you want to set it. But for the purpose of this, now we've taken data, we've taken our handwritten digit data set, and we've actually visualized it in a way where you can infer information from. You know, really, when you look at this, what can it tell you is what to, you know, what can you think about? And then can you apply that to some of your own projects? Can you think about how you can apply it to other data sets that might have and how that would be advantageous to you? That's really the main takeaway. And you can see, again, SK Learn, take a look at their documentation for this because it's fantastic. They, it's, it's such a great tool to use because it makes it very easy to perform k-means analysis along with principal component analysis, um, you know, through this short series, although we, you know, haven't delved into uh, a much deeper understanding, or although we haven't delved into a much deeper layer to examine each single piece of the code as what it's doing, you can get this up and running with uh, scikit-learn very easy it's it's efficient you know if you want to run it on your own uh, data set so that being said so please you know pull up the information for sklearn 
take a look, um, you know, on PCA or principal component analysis, how you can use it to um, develop and enhance your data or your projects, operations. And, um, and again, matplotlib is a great tool, very useful for plotting data. As you can see, the colors make it very easy to see the different parts of our data pieced together. Overall, I hope you guys have enjoyed this project. I hope you've taken some useful information from it. I highly encourage you to continue, experiment with your own data sets, experiment with your own uh, analytical methods within the k-means, within PCA, and uh, within pattern recognition. Again, this is just one. You can look at random forest for uh, SVMs. There's a, a, a range of methods to look at for pattern recognition, but k-means is by far one of the most popular. It's a great tool to use. I appreciate the interest in the course. Please share, post any comments, any questions that you may have. Subscribe to the Super Data Science channel where you will get weekly up-to-date useful information on what's going on in the industry. And be on the lookout for new series and new courses in the near future. All right, thanks again, and I will see you in the next series.